Hey everybody, time for another midweek chat. I, I couldn't, you know, I couldn't resist. I, I did one in front of the other hibiscus, the red ones. Uh, those are, there's four bushes here. And, and uh, well, tomorrow is just a full day. We got first day of school, we got first day of religious ed, we got an all day staff retreat. So it'd be a little hard to get away for the chat. Plus it's gonna be strong winds from the south. I thought, well, where am I gonna do the chat if we have 25 mile an hour gusting winds? So I thought, I'm gonna just, instead of go for a longer bike ride tonight, I did these, these little loops, go up Folsom, over Folsom, turn right before you get to Claremont, hit Truax, hit uh, 14th, come back, go up Folsom. Uh, Folsom's a steep hill, so. Anyway, it's a little more of, I did three of those loops and uh, so I was back in time. It's gonna get a little dark. And I started this, I started this video and I forgot I printed this. I wanted to read some of this. And I thought, oh, I was only seven minutes into it, but that's okay. Hey, some fun stuff first for me. I hope it's not too boring, but Minnesota State Fair, it ended yesterday. And I'm a proud Wisconsin guy, but I love going to the Minnesota State Fair. I like the food, I like the freebies. And every year I try to get a freebie like this. I got it. It's Goldie the Goldie the Gopher. I'm all about the Badgers. Love the Badgers, right? You gotta like Goldie though, right? Goldie the Gopher. And this, uh, so I try to get one of these every year. You gotta earn them lately. Sometimes you just spin a wheel and it's a backpack and you want a backpack. It's one of those string backpacks put around your back, you know, like that. But um, I had to answer an interesting question to, to earn this. I took a survey on an iPad. It took about eight minutes. It was all about uh, iris, your eyes, technology. And I don't know if it's in place, but they were taught, they were trying to figure out um, how people felt about it. So like if, if your workplace required you to turn a, a camera on your computer terminal that could, would detect your irises and how they're moving. So it's, it's partly ID, it can always give you an ID. Um, you can identify a person by their irises, right? In fact, when I went to Israel last time, I think that's how they, um, at the passport entrance, I think that's what we did. Um, and, uh, anyway, um, but there's other things you can, it just not it just isn't like your identification, but it, it can track your eye movements. And if you, it can tell when you're like engaged and paying attention to something or when your mind is wandering and you're wandering off. And so in a helpful way, you could just maybe have it for yourself. It might be an option someday. I would like this on my iPad or my phone or my you know, tablet or my, other tablet um so when you're reading something it wouldn't work for a book though good old book it might detect when you're like i don't know i read i read a lot my mind just wanders and i wouldn't mind i think if uh it went beep 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 when i like could tell i wasn't reading maybe it'd be annoying because maybe sometimes you're reading something and you just want to think about it you want to stop reading so that could be annoying i guess but on the surface of it, I thought, well, that'd be okay. These are the kind of questions that are being asked. Would you would you volunteer to have your device monitor your irises if the only purpose was to uh, alert you when your mind was wandering? So it's kind of like when you're driving a car. I got a car now, I think I mentioned it before, maybe it saved my life. A few weeks ago, I fell asleep on 94. But it went beep, 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 because it, could, it does that when I leave the lane. So I just fell asleep for a second, but still, I could it could have been really, anyway. So I, I don't mind those, hey, wake up kind of, uh, alerts um, but it's most invasive your place at work might I don't know if they could make you but maybe it might be a term of employment that you'd have to have this iris detecting and then the boss could tell when you're not focused on your work you know so anyway th I took a whole survey about that and that's why I got this okay that's nice then I went to uh, next door, the St. Thomas, that's the University of Minnesota, so the St. Thomas, and said, let's talk about grief. And there was another survey I took in order to earn some prizes, <laughs> that this was for everybody. And then after you took the survey, you could get a, a water bottle, a, a nice pen, um, uh, a tote bag, said St. Thomas, with the shape of Minnesota, and then the Thomas in the middle of it. I like all Tom, Thomas things, of course, right? Because it's my name. And, um, or, what I ended up getting was, 
right? College of Health. Um, guess what this is? Can you tell what this is? It's a disposable straw. Or no, it's, un, it's a, per, a reusable straw. It's not disposable straw. There's a lot of, made about all the pollution from throwing straws away. Well, this is reusable. And I try, honestly, I try to reuse. I go to these, I go through these phases where I make smoothies at the house. I'm not in that phase right now. But, you know, they're fun to drink with a straw. You don't know, get the mustache and everything. And, uh, I try to reuse them, but you know, they get gunked up. You run water through them, but they don't, but look, look at this. It's got its own straw cleaner. So I thought this was cool. I thought I'm gonna get this. So I got this, that's great. Comes in its nice St. Thomas sleeve. So to, you know, to encourage me. And I went with a good friend and she took the same um, survey and was not, prone to want to pick a gift off the table. And I said, come on, you earned it. She says, no, no. I said, well, come on, it's gone. Get, get, get something for me then, because it's St. Thomas. I like St. Thomas stuff. And she said, okay. So, um, da -da, I got a water bottle. So two reasons for for uh, sanctity. I like purple, that was my dad's favorite color. I like blue, um, but isn't that great? Okay. So my heart's still with, uh, University of Wisconsin and Notre Dame, but it's fun to get University of Minnesota and St. Thomas stuff. It's good. Okay, that's the, kind of the frivolous thing. Oh, I also got these instant potato meals. They were handing those out free, cooked. You know, I thought they were good, and then you could take one for the road. Okay, so should we move on? The Pope. The Pope's in uh, Indonesia as we speak. I don't know about you, but I don't think a lot about Indonesia. Um, and do you know what the five most populous countries in the world are? You'd probably guess China and India. Do you know that China used to, be, I just learned all this stuff this afternoon. Um, China used to be 21% of the world's population. And, uh, now it's not. Now it's like 18%. So their, their, their population curve is, isn't accelerating like it had been and others are catching up, but it's still, it's still the most popular, 1.4 billion people in China. Uh, second, India, right? 1.3 billion, it's really close. So in, in the old days, now it's 36% of the population. But I remember hearing this some years ago and it was like between the two of them, it was 40% of the world's population was either Chinese or Indian. And so two out of five people or one or the other. I, that kind of blew my mind. The third most populous country in the world is us. It's the U.S. And, uh, but it goes way down. So they're at 1.4, 1.3 billion. We're at 328 million. But it's still, we're 4.3% we're of the world's population. And the fourth, why do I do this? The fourth is Indonesia. And I'm pretty sure it was that way 20 years ago when I last thought about it as well. But and they, I don't have the figures on them. And then the next one, I know it used to be Brazil when I was memorizing this stuff, but it's not Brazil anymore. Brazil dropped down to sixth. The number fifth is Pakistan. And then, then it's Brazil and it's Nigeria. So uh, anyway, so he's going to a very populous country and it's only 3% of the population is Christian, but it's 3% of, uh, you know, like 300 million. So that's a, that's a lot of a lot of people there. So we'll see, he's on a peace building. They think that he might talk a lot about the environment and environmental degradation. That would take some chutzpah there because it's a lot of pollution in Indonesia. I guess it's just known for its smog and, and bad weather or bad environmental conditions. So, um, but they're welcoming him with great joy. It sounds like a really interesting place. It sounds like a place of moderate Islam or mainstream Islam, it's very peaceable, though, um, you know, there's always people that ruin that, you know, as extremists. In two, 2021, there was a bombing outside the Catholic cathedral um, that injured 20, 20 uh, Catholics there on Palm Sunday. So that was sad. And there was a lot of uh, uproar against that in the country. So it's not like people liked it or celebrated it. But religious violence, the worst. I don't know, Violence is violence, I guess. I was going to say it's the worst kind because 
religion should be all about peace, and getting along, loving our neighbor, and yet so much violence is rooted in it. Um, what I actually ran back to get was a statement from the Global Imams Council. So the Global Council, it's, it's not as uh, structured as like the Catholic Church with the Pope and the bishops and the Cardinals, the United States Conference of Catholic Bishops, all that. But this, these are um, 1,300 Imams worldwide in this association, and they came together to condemn the violence that Hamas has been committing. So sometimes, if we're not too educated on it, we just think that Hamas is like Muslim. Like it, it stands for like what Muslims are, and, and uh, you know it's a terrorist organization. And uh, anyway, these these Muslims stood up and said, you know, in the name of God, the Most Compassionate, the Most Merciful, the Global Imams Council condemns in the strongest possible terms the barbaric actions of Hamas, which led to the brutal execution of six innocent hostages, including a dual American citizen, Hirsch Goldberg, Poland in a tunnel in the city of Rasa in Gaza. It's a, it's a long statement, there's one more paragraph too, but um, we hold Hamas directly responsible for the deaths and suffering of all innocent lives lost since October 7th, as its actions have not only brought death and destruction to the region, but have also caused immense suffering to the Palestinian people. Um, yeah, we call upon the international community, all religious leaders, and people of conscience to unite against these acts of terror and to work tirelessly for a future in which peace, justice, and respect for every human life are the foundations of our common existence. So, I just thought that was worth sharing. That was actually posted on Facebook by a Facebook friend of mine who's a rabbi in Jerusalem. And I wish I could say we were close friends, but I just met her on my sabbatical, and I don't think she would know me from Adam today, but I enjoy seeing her posts, and she's very uh, uh, peace-loving, peace deep uh, thinker and, and rabbi. Uh, Amarit Rosen is her name. Apparently her father, is, uh, Rabbi Rosen, is in England, and he's kind of a famous, famous, famous guy, so. Hi, how are you? Good, how are you? You're at the dog. Whoa, yeah. look at that face. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> nice. Face only a mother could love. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Um, so... So that's going on, but the uh, this mosque in, uh, or the cathedral in Indonesia where the Pope is today or will be going tomorrow, it's called the Cathedral of the Assumption of Mary. And it's on this big square in Jakarta, the capital. And across the square is the largest mosque in Indonesia. And they're connected underneath by what they call the Tunnel of Friendship. Is that neat? So you can walk from, it's super hot outside, you don't wanna walk outside. You can walk from the Catholic Cathedral to the mosque and uh, um, underground, so it's kind of they call it. I like what they call it—the tunnel of friendship, right? Um, he's going to have an interfaith meeting. Guess who's going to be at the interfaith meeting? Sometimes in, in Eau Claire, there's an interfaith prayer service. Our parishioner Bob is is instrumental in organizing those. We've hosted a few here, um, but it's uh, people belong to religions: Islam, Buddhism, Confucius. Confucianism, Hinduism, Catholicism, and Protestantism. So they're going to gather for a, for a talk, and uh, they'll meet. It's it's good, right? Um. Okay, so that that's happening. So pay attention. It's an eleven day visit. He's going to be in Indonesia, Papua New Guinea, East Timor, and Singapore. Yeah. And the president of Indonesia said, Islam, Indonesia, and the Vatican have the same commitment to future peace and brotherhood, as well as ensuring the welfare of humanity. So I know those are just words, but they're words that need to be spoken, and it's, I'm glad they're being spoken. Okay, what do we got? Should I do some Paris news? I know, I'm just kind of rapping about all kinds of things. So the only only uh, bulletin I got from our staff about news was from Nick, our music director. Choirs are restarting. Ace, also known as the ladies choir. Though I don't think it's in the constitution you have to be a woman, but it tends to be uh, women. Uh, they meet every Tuesday at 5.30 to rehearse. Uh, the adult choir which could include high school students, so it's not necessarily adults. Our, our names maybe need tweaking, but... And the men's choir meet every other Tuesday. The youth choir sings monthly. 
So it looks like Tuesday is the big night for choir rehearsals if you want to join a choir. Also, there's a funeral choir which sings as needed. There'll be bulletin announcements coming up, but folks can just reach out to me, Nick says, if they are interested and I can help them find the right group. So maybe this is your year to be part of a choir, you know? The, the, if you're available during the days, the least commitment would be the funeral choirs. And uh, sound looks like if you have every Tuesday you're willing to repractice, maybe the Ace Choir. Okay, you could, be, you could break the glass ceiling if you're a man and you join the Ace Choir. Okay. Um, I, what did I say? Oh, I just thought, there's such, I don't know. See, I, I'm gonna sort of be critical of someone who's judging, but then I'm judging the person who's judging, so maybe I'm part of the problem. <laughs> but I, I, know, I, just, I just go out and read these articles on the Catholic, Catholic Wire, and you know, there's this kind of famous athlete who's, in, you know, insulting the um, Cardinal Archbishop of Chicago because when he, you know, there was someone who led the prayer for the RNC convention, and then there's the, our, our own former bishop, but our Archbishop of Milwaukee did a nice job leading the prayer there. And then uh, the, the DNC was in Chicago, and so they asked the Cardinal of Chicago to, to read it. Anyway, anyway, so he was dressed up, and, he, and his, um, like Cardinals do, his pectoral cross and bishops uh, was in his pocket so you could see the thing. Anyway, he, he insulted him for, for not showing the cross. They thought he was hiding the cross. When in fact, that's just, that's kind of what's, that's the norm when you're, um, a bishop and you're outside of uh, your diocese or you're ministering to people outside the diocese. This was a, nat a national audience. And uh, any anyway, I just thought, oh gosh, is this what we're gonna start doing now? We're gonna just pick apart people for things like that. They're not wearing their cross right or something. Um, so I don't know. I'll try to, I'll try, <laughs> I don't know. I just think more more peace, less less division. Maybe that can sound namby pamby sometimes, because, uh, and you can you can you can stand up for stuff, you know, in respectful ways. I think, and not like like nitpicky, and, you know, like better than, worse than kind of ways. So anyway, I just it's a way to I'm just encouraging us to be more peaceable than that. Speaking of peaceable, um, so we had Labor Day. I don't know. I was just thinking on Labor Day. Um, I had a nice bike ride yesterday, and uh, there were all these uh, hay bales. Um, I thought, well, that's yeah, the, the labor, you know. And I had some cheese today, and cheese comes from cows that make milk, and they get fed this hay that I saw all baled up. So, you know, I'm kind of on the consuming end of all that work. And, uh, you know, and a lot of it's done by, you know, recent immigrants and uh, farming in our area. So I just really grateful for them and, and feeling that need they have in, in, in my life and the life of our economy and all that. And uh, so we're all just so interconnected. And it's easy to, it's easy to forget that. We kind of have this myth that I'm, I'm my own person, you know, and, but boy, we, we sure rely on others even if we don't think we do, you know. But, um, so what else was I going to talk about a little bit? Oh, TV mass. So we're going to have a... Uh, wow. The knee, ooh. So, um... Give me a little peek at those other flowers for a sec. Are those cicadas? Can you hear those? They're not really close. They're not in this tree next to me, but... Um, the first time I heard a cicada was visiting my friend Father Bob in Northern Illinois. Maybe it was 17 years ago. I say, aren't they on this 17-year cycle? And this is this is the one where it's they're all over the place. And um, it was loud. I thought it was I thought it was an electrical transformer buzzing, and I was a little worried that it would fall and burn the city or something. And Bob said, "No, that, those are cicadas." I'm like, "Oh, these little these but they look sort of like cockroaches." I think. I think that's what we're hearing. think so so um, anyway that's by the way I got distracted by the sound but I wanted to point out how, how lovely that this once every 17 year uh, blossoming of the cicada population 
TV Mass. I got a, a, an email, Father Krasinski and I got emails from uh, the diocese uh, worship office, Chris Carstens, and he said, um, hey, you guys willing to host a TV Mass in your parishes? And uh, we both said, heck yeah. So I think the last time we did that was 10 years ago, my first year here. And then they started doing all the Masses like in La Crosse. So it's glad they're getting out in the diocese now. So I'll let you know, it's gonna be like October, November. It's like they tape it, they're half hour Masses, which might appeal to you, but probably not. You want a little fuller experience, I think, of the Mass when you come, right? And um, so we might, we might be celebrating Advent Masses in October because um, they tape them in advance and then they release them. So we might be wearing them. And I think it'd be great. Usually they just have a few people come, but I think it'd be great if we had a good number of people that showed up, you know, and they just, they just tape one after the other. And uh, obviously the homily has to be short. I did a few of these, uh, some here, but also when I was, where was I? Was that Newman? I, every, but I, I like doing them. I like, uh, uh, these days when everybody sort of picks on how people say mass, I'm a little nervous about it, but, um, but I, I, I got affirmed last time the way I did it, so hopefully it's, it's similar. Um, but when I do preach, I have to say the one who's the timekeeper, he's always in the back going, stop. You know, it's like, you, we gotta, you gotta stop, you gotta stop. We only have so much time, because it's on TV. And it has to be done in a half hour. So anyway, that'll be nice. And for you who, who watch the TV mass, you'll get to see St. James. That'll be great, it'll just be really nice. Um, so, oh, the icon workshop. So I don't have an, I had these John the Baptist icons in this box and I took them out. Um, that'll be the 13th, 14th, and 15th, $270. Um, I don't think I'll be able to do it. I was able to, to go through that process when I was on sabbatical. So um, there's just a lot, a few things going on. Um, but it'd be Friday afternoon, you gather late afternoon after school hours and you get a, train and then, then he'll have all the all the supplies all the pigments all the boards all the brushes the image and you don't have to i'm pretty sure you don't have to to create the image freehand it's going to be of christ his face and his shoulders like from here up and um and the teacher i think will help you you know and so you don't have to be like this great artist to do it but you'll you'll hear about the art of iconography and uh gosh i wish i had i should have brought a an example. I don't know if you know what an icon is, but it's just Byzantine icon. It's sort of a flat, it's not meant to look like a photograph, you know, it's sort of stylized. The nose is usually elongated, the eyes are kind of looking right at you. A small mouth and small ears to evoke kind of silence. Um, and it's supposed to draw you in to the sacred. I find them very effective to pray with. So um, maybe next week I'll bring out my icon that I wrote when I was in Bethlehem. Uh, speaking of Bethlehem, but, but if you'd like to come, just come. we can find out more information. It's in the bulletin and all, and all this, but it, it does cost some money because of the supplies, and it's what he does for a living. But I think it's, if you got into it and you came and you left with an icon of Christ, I think you'd find it, that it's worth the $270 if you have it. Um, Bethlehem, we got our olive oil. Uh, it's been selling really well, so I imagine after this weekend it'll be gone. I had uh, six out-of-town orders. So I sent one off to Milwaukee. I'll do a, a delivery over to Menominee uh, this week or next. Um, but that goes to benefit the large community in Bethlehem. You know, I, I mentioned last week at Mass that usually there's 1.5 million tourists or pilgrims. Well, some are tourists. Some are pilgrims, like the ones I lead. Some are tourists they just want to see. Um, and... Um, they don't have, like none. It's probably like, instead of 1.5 million, there's probably been like a couple thousand people that in the last eight months that have gone through, if that. So you can imagine how devastating it is on the economy. Plus, the people most uh, who thrive most in Bethlehem have jobs in Israel. They have a special permits. So they can, it's, a, it's a walled off city. It's the West Bank. There's this whole wall. So it's, it's kind of like living in a cage. And... Um, they're, they're, ever since the raid, uh, uh, the awful Hamas raid, October 7th, year ago, they, they don't have the ability to, they took away their permits, Every, just everybody. So nobody's going into work. So you can imagine how depressed the economy is there. And so we may be out of olive oil. We'll have some more and then we'll be selling their Christmas crafts. It helps this organization that serves the intellectually disabled. It's just such a beautiful organization. 
and our purchases help keep them floating. So, uh, good, okay. So there's that. Um, yeah, it's just so frustrating. It seems like they could make peace, but like I mentioned before, um, the more I read about it, it, it's sort of a political interpretation, I guess, but the more I read about it, the more I, I'm convinced that, um, well, it's, on both sides, it just, it, there's not a desire for peace, but they could have a ceasefire. But if there's a ceasefire, then these key players that are really anti-Palestinian, that are former, you know, they have a parliamentary system, they would pull out of the coalition with the prime minister. And he kind of needs to be in power because there's all these these court cases against him. He could go to jail. And uh, you know that's part that's part of it. He doesn't want he doesn't want the peace because he has to keep his coalition together. And so all the people that suffer, you know, I, I think that's in the ballpark of what's happening. And you know, if I'm wrong, you know, I'm sorry, but it just seems like man, how. how you know the, the thirst the thirst for power of, of uh, you know one or a few can just cause the suffering of so many and I grieve that deeply and the other side they say Hamas isn't that eager but though they had terms and I think they would have accepted the terms but then then Israel added terms um, they would like to a bigger conflagration they're not you know great peacemakers you know Hamas so um, anyway so I, I grieve that deeply as I know I know you do too continue to pray for peace um what else did i hear from i keep working on the pilgrimage hoping that peace will come i changed a little bit on what we would do in jordan and i shortened it by one day so we could get a better rate on the flight out of minneapolis that'd be june 5th 19th if you want to be on the list let me know um but i listened to the so these six um hostages that were brutally killed right before they might have been rescued. One of them was an American, Israeli. It must have been dual citizenship. His name was Hirsch Goldberg Polin. And um, I just want to read a few things that his mother said. I don't know if it's at a funeral or a memorial service or just an interview. But it was after her son was killed. She said, I want to do Hakarat Hatov, Hebrew for. I want to recognize the good. I want to thank God right now in front of all of you for giving me this magnificent present of my Hirsch, her son, Herschel. For 23 years, I was privileged to have the most stunning honor to be Hirsch's mama. I'll take it and say thank you. I just wish it could have been longer. My sweet boy, finally, 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 you're free. I will love you and I will miss you every single day for the rest of my life. That's worth rewinding to listen to that. Just beautiful faith and love in the midst of terrible grief right so okay i'll let you look in at at this listen to the cicadas and see both plants and there's two more I, um i counted these flowers on sunday after mass i think they were like 130 roughly you know but it's a lot so anyway let's let's take this in a little bit we pray to our loving God. You are a God of peace. We want to practice like Hirsch's mom, Hakarat Hatov, to recognize the good. Help us see the good in ourselves. Help us to know how precious we are in your eyes. Help us to see the good of others and not just be kind of picking away to make our own position seem so great, and others bad. Help us to see the good. Help us to be healers in your world where there's so much violence and division and hate. Help us to be really curious and interested 
in people maybe that are different from us. And we pray for the Pope and his journey, that it may be a journey of peacemaking and goodwill spreading. Amen.